in defense of Wizard of Cause. Hey everybody, I uploaded a video last night about this Crouton T drama as it relates to Wizard of Cause, but I was hasty and didn't put as much work into clarifying my position as I normally would. Some people objected to the vagueness of my testimony, I got annoyed with them, but they had a point, so I apologize for getting mad. Now, before I begin, apparently I need to clarify to you guys that I have no absolute reason for you to listen to me, because I have no absolute proof that Wizard of Cause was in no way significantly involved in this drama. But considering the fact that I don't believe that he is, I'm going to deliver my t testimony anyway. You th you can think of me as some sort of character witness or whatever, because this does seem to be somewhat of a public trial of mob justice, as messed up as that sounds. Whether or not you care what I have to say is up to you. If you don't care what I have to say and you don't believe that I am somebody with a decently balanced and level head, then you can also unsubscribe to my channel. I really don't care. But if you do think that I tend to make sense about things and you don't think that I'm somebody who sacrifices my integrity for popularity's sake or because I am worried about being called names by angry mobs of people who don't know me, then perhaps my testimony about Wizard of Cause will mean something to you. Here's the honest truth. I was vague about my reasons for trusting that Wizard of Cause was completely unaware of any sort of doxing campaign on Crouton T's server for a very specific reason. I was guarding personal information about him and another person, his ex-girlfriend. But honestly, I decided that I might as well just kind of explain what happened in vague detail because people love to pry anyway and it's not that big of a secret. Nick Goroff, a.k.a. Wizard of Cause, broke up with his girlfriend of almost a year a few months ago, and she had been living with him in his apartment. This was a big change in his life to break up with her. As he was in love with her, she had grown close to his kid, and so he was extremely bummed out when they broke up. Now, many of you likely know about this because he was not entirely private about it, but a lot of you probably don't. A lot of you probably don't really follow Nick on YouTube and Twitter and don't really give a crap about his personal life or his affairs unless there's some crazy drama that, that comes up where some of you will apparently descend like vultures because you have nothing better to do. Regardless, in my case, this wasn't true. I wasn't just an observer, I already considered Nick a friend when I noticed that he was posting on social media implying that his heart was broken and stuff like that. Furthermore, I actually knew his girlfriend as I had met her in person and had hung out with her on more than one live stream. And thus, I realized that I had some good advice to offer Nick regarding the breakup, which was mainly the following. I was like, dude, I know that this is really bumming you out, but do everything you can to avoid talking about this publicly, because it's not a good idea for somebody with a public platform to talk about their breakup. That's what I said. I went on and on about why it's not a good idea to talk openly about breakups when you have a public platform. We talk for hours and hours in voice calls, and I even have Skype text chat logs where we went back and forth about this for hours. Hopefully I won't feel compelled to show people them because it's none of your business and it wouldn't be interesting anyway. It's just about breakup stuff. <laughs> Nick totally saw my point about why he shouldn't talk about it on social media and thanked me for giving him good advice about the breakup numerous times. He thought I gave him good advice. Advice that I had gathered from my own personal life back from times when I was a musician and I had a breakup that apparently half the city I lived in ended up knowing about because I talked about it too much. I like to think he mostly took my advice and reframed and refrained from talking about his breakup publicly too much 
or referring to it on social media. But I'm not entirely positive that he did because it's not like I follow everything that he does. But we still talked privately and I still saw his Facebook posts. I knew he was still bummed out about it, but I knew he wasn't talking about it as much as maybe he could. But he was still bummed out. I do feel I know for certain all of this stuff that, you know, because of all of this, I feel like I know for certain that his head was simply not very focused on anything having to do with YouTube. From what I understand, he pretty much forced himself to put on a happy face and do the YouTube Saints for numerous weeks in a row, but it was largely performative, and if you know him at all, you could have probably been able to tell. I hate the fact that I'm saying this publicly, because the ironic part is that there was so much time spent from me emphasizing to him that he shouldn't talk about his breakup publicly. And now here I am talking about it publicly, though I'm only doing it because he's been attacked about some other crap that apparently happened to be going on during the same time frame when I sincerely believe that he simply wasn't following it and wasn't and wouldn't have been able to care much about it even if he tried to follow it. You see, I talked to him for about 45 minutes straight about the Kraut and T server drama last night, and he told me what he knew, what he didn't know, and answered all of my questions to the seeming best of his abilities. My honest take is that it sounded like he did definitely notice that Kraut was being a bit intense, and maybe Kraut was perhaps doing some shady stuff. He didn't really know, but but he said that it seemed kind of likely you know i'm not i'm not going to put words into his mouth but he he wasn't exactly defending kraut okay um he 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 said that kraut does seem to have a really intense hatred of the alt right and didn't uh, and nick didn't necessarily agree with the intensity of the approach is what i will say and he said that he didn't really know much of anything about what was on the discord server nick didn't he just didn't really know And he's on like 40 Discord servers and doesn't really follow all of them. He also didn't really know what Jeff was up to, but it sounds like he plans on being loyal to Jeff because they are good friends and because they work together. But still, he didn't say Jeff did nothing wrong, nor Jeff definitely did something wrong. He said he doesn't follow it, similar to the way that I don't follow it. So hey, I believe him. I honestly think that this was just something that his friends got involved in. He didn't really care about it. And then all of a sudden he was being attacked and accused of stuff by a few people. So he told them to go to hell and I guess booted one person from a server, which they used to claim he was hiding something. I don't personally think that that's the case. I think that Nick had broken up with his girlfriend and didn't want to deal with any sort of drama, and then when the drama came a knock into him, he got annoyed because he had never wanted to deal with it in the first place. That's my testimony, and you can believe me if you want. This is not coming really so much because of any sort of loyalty to Nick as a friend, or because he's somebody that has helped me out as a YouTuber. Rather, it's just really what I believe, and it seems really unjust to me that he's now being persecuted due to guilt by association. This is very different than my stance on Jeff, because truthfully, while I have always liked Jeff as a friend, and I am predisposed to siding with him about such stuff, I also have no necessary reason to vouch for Jeff in this specific drama. However, with Nick, I do have a reason. That all being said, you guys who are going on this witch hunt should really take a bit of a pause and ask yourself why you are doing this. Are you really seeking truth and justice, or is this just angry tribalism coming from people who don't really have anything better to worry about? I mean, I started my YouTube channel personally because I had an ongoing frustration with literally thousands of people in my own personal extended social sphere. I had some crap to talk about, and YouTube was just a platform for me to talk about it. But I would have gladly talked about it in other avenues. 
However, it really does seem like there's a large percentage of people on YouTube who are simply here for YouTube itself. It seems like it's not so much about the issues or what is going on in their lives that actually matters, but rather a never-ending quest to keep busy with drama. It's like what John Ronson talked about in the TED Talk, How One Tweet Can Ruin Your Life, where he described people getting addicted to outrage and public shaming, where people felt that if they stopped having people to publicly shame with an angry mob, they'd be bored and unenthusiastic about life. That isn't really a problem for me because I still encounter SJWs every day on my Facebook timeline. I don't have to look any further than my hundreds of friends on Facebook to be reminded of why exactly I appreciate the people in my YouTube sphere. However, it does seem to me, like for a lot of you, that perhaps since Anita Sarkeesian, Milo Stewart, and Cat Black all got boring to talk about, maybe some of you need a new target or something. And to some people, that target is the alt-right. Apparently, it is to Kraut and T. And to others, that seems to be each other. You're turning on each other because you need a target to talk trash about. Now, I'm certainly not saying nobody did anything wrong and that you should never call people out because maybe they did. I don't even know Kraut, and perhaps he did bad stuff. And while I do know Jeff... I don't know that he did nothing wrong, and it would be a violation of my integrity to actually defend him too much, though it would be a violation of my integrity to talk badly about him as well, especially considering the fact that he's my friend. However, I can say with my full integrity that I do believe that Wizard of Cause should be left out of this, and any involvement that he has in this was more than probably entirely guilt by association. There's a chance that I could be wrong, but that is what I believe, whether you care or not. Thanks.